Oh. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Woo! Look at that! Oh, look at how smooth that is. Chef Brian Sow here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Alex the French, guys. I met the Italian king of Cabanara, Master Chef Luciano Monacilio Rome. I know I butchered that. I'm sorry, Italian people, or anyone who speaks Italian. I'm truly sorry. Before I go on with today's episode, I do want to give a shout out to all of my amazing sous chef level patrons. Thank you so much for your support. And for those of you who are watching and want to support the channel further, please visit the link in the description below where it'll take you to my official Patreon page. And by joining, you can take advantage of some awesome perks. And for those of you who didn't know, I do play guitar for the heavy metal band Lost Becomes. You can check us out on all major streaming platforms and if you could do me a favor by following us on instagram at lost becomes i greatly appreciate it and with that out of the way let's react to some shit do you remember luciano monocilio from my monocilio. pasta series the okay. italian chef super talented again monocilio that's how it's supposed to be pronounced my bad <laughs> literally opened my eyes to the beauty Ooh. of simple pasta. He did that by cooking uh, pasta aglio olio for me, which was amazing. But in all honesty, that's not the dish he's known for. You see, uh, Luciano Monocilio is the king of carbonara. King of carbonara. Okay. carbonara. The game is on in Rome. There's carbonara basically everywhere. It's madness. Can you just imagine how good the dish has to be? in order to stand up. It's like trying to be famous making croissant in Paris. <laughs> you don't do that. Well, he did. Why are you here? Why? Why am I here? <laughs> you know why I'm here. <laughs> why? You know why I'm here. I'm here because of a promise we made don't, a while back. Sorry, I'm interrupting don't. your work. Yeah, don't, don't tell me. You're here for, for Lent de Carbonara. For sure. E come no. But you did some Fratic Sato? I did some practice, not too much, I'm afraid. Okay. Let me finish here. Okay. A couple of minutes and then... Uh... <laughs> Basically, he's like, yo, I'm busy rest running a restaurant. Can you fuck off for a few minutes? <laughs> I've definitely been guilty of doing that, not just that mission, but, you know, at all my past restaurants, someone will come up to me wanting to chat and I'm like, yo, I am, I am working right now. Like, I'm doing shit. I'll, I'll get back to you in a few minutes, please. Please. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I got the worst idea in this world. I'm making that Ooh, look at that kitchen. Spick and span, clean, beautiful. And you know, you can really tell by looking under the shelving, you know, if they're really paying attention though, to those details. And look, under the shelf, spick and span, under the stove, you know, yeah, there's some carbon staining over there. That's kind of normal, unavoidable um, to have some, but yeah. Beautifully clean kitchen. I'm oh, the king of carbonara. I'm stupid. <laughs> okay. Okay, guanciale. Mm. 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 Okay. It's not doing spaghetti. Sure, you don't have to do spaghetti. Of the color. Ah, ah, he's rendering that guanciale out so he started it low and I don't let's go back a little bit and you can see he kicked up the heat a touch yep you see kicked up the heat okay. and look at that beautifully rendered started it low brought up the heat start it low it slowly warms up the guanciale or whatever fat product you have in there Fat slowly starts to render out and then you kick up the heat to get it crispy Dude, how intimidating. I wouldn't want to do that in front of this dude, in front of the king of carbonara. Like, gosh, talk about nerve wracking. Uh, it might be a little too fast, mm. I'm not sure, but we'll see. A little thick, no, 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 that's, that's beautiful. Hell yeah. I, I was gonna say, I, I, I thought the, the egg mixture with the cheese and the black pepper and, you know, they didn't show the dish from A to Z, but I'm guessing he put in a little pasta water to thin it down. I was about to say it looked a little too thick, but if you do notice, I think he was he was mixing in the cream off the heat. So he's using the residual heat from the pan to get this creamy. You don't want a direct heat source, otherwise you're gonna make scrambled eggs. Very good, chef. Thank you, Alex. 
Thank you. You want to? Maybe you want to fuck off. Oh my gosh, this dude is probably like, why are you showing me this amateur shit? I have to try it. Please be my guest. <laughs> Sounds good, eh? I think. Okay. But it's a little bit fat. A little bit fat? Ah. Okay. Also, less creamy. Ah, less. Okay. So I, th I think he said uh, less creamy. So, uh, you know, maybe he should have thinned it down a touch. It's look more traditional than my carbonara. Very cool. So he's acknowledging that this is just very classic. He's also acknowledging that his carbonara is not traditional. It's it's not the norm. Very cool. So, you know, that that's him acknowledging that to me tells me that he really knows what it's supposed to be and he knows what boundaries he's pushing. Okay, this is like mom's carbonara. Yeah, yeah. Okay, not bad. I'm taking mom's carbonara is good for me. Yeah. Can you think of ways on how yeah. I could be improving this? Yeah, but... I can show you maybe something because for me better than this. <laughs> Please join me in the kitchen. Show me oh, the way. way. Very cool. You know, he's saying like this is like mom's carbonara. And you know, like my Steve Byrne sandwich. Steve Byrne, the amazing comedian, him and I have both have Korean moms. I'm using my mom's uh, Korean barbecue recipe, or, or rather uh, her bulgogi recipe. You know, for, for that one, it works perfectly for what I'm doing, but just because it's traditional doesn't necessarily mean it can't be quote unquote improved on. Not that it needs to be improved, but then there's the room for interpretation, and that's how a pro chef really puts their identity and a spin on something. And you're walking a very fine line between, you know, people basically saying you ruined a dish or you pushed it forward. And that is, you know, one of the hardest things to do is take something that's so traditional and make it your own in a unique way where people respect it. But inevitably, there'll always be a portion of people that despise it. it it's 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 kind of crazy but also you know the fun of um the food and beverage business mm. yeah when that classical music starts and a chef starts cooking you know you're in for some shit it's some good shit okay so he's cutting it pretty big big chunks. I also noticed that the water wasn't at a rolling boil, but I think that's totally fine in a, uh, here we go, in a professional pasta cooker is because what you don't see is on the, so this is the top of the pasta cooker. This is the basket that dunks in and it goes in like this. And let's say the rest of my forearm is the handle right what you don't see below the basket is there's another there's a grating over there and below that is more of the tank that has water but all the heating elements professional pasta cookers are holding a lot of water so even if it's not at this rolling boil it's hot and you're putting the pasta in it's not going to change the temperature significantly because the mass of water is so great and remember there's another section of this cooker below the basket that has the heating element as well as more water so that's the big difference between your home stove and a pot with uh with a basket maybe you're not even using a basket you just pour it out through and put it the pasta into a colander the point i'm making is that these professional cookers carry a lot more water and the main reason for that is so that when you add product into it it doesn't fluctuate the temperature greatly mm. beautifully shot though as a cliche as this is i mean no denying alex did a great job on the editing mm -hmm. all right so you saw he was mixing it in a bowl. That's actually how I do mine where, um, you know, he did, it didn't show a double boiler, but what I do is I get a pot of water, a pot with a little bit of water and I use the steam to gently warm up the egg mixture with the pasta and I toss it in this bowl and I go on the heat, off the heat, on the heat heat off the heat because again steam is a much more gentle source of heat versus something that's very directional like fire interesting was 
Oh, so it's not a it's not a bowl. It is a pot, or maybe it's a. Yeah, I guess it's a pot or a bowl with a handle. I think this is the pasta cooker, and this is what I'm talking about. I can't really tell because it's so dark, but this metal grating towards the corner of the video, to me, and, and, and the salt stains indicates that this is the pasta cooker, and he's using the heat of the steam and the water, resting the bowl in there. So it makes sense he's using a bowl slash a pot with a handle on it, because if he were to hold the bowl over the steam, it can burn his hand. But that is actually how I do my carbonata. And uh, if the if my video hasn't come out yet, it will. I promise it will. I know it's taking forever. It. I'm just so damn busy with the sandwich shop. It is coming. But if it did come out already, because I'm filming this so much in advance, then... Uh, Hope you liked it. Oh, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Woo. Look at that. Oh, look at how smooth that is. So when you heat up egg yolks with sugar on a double boiler and you whisk that, you're, uh, in this case, you're not whisking it, but I'm just trying to make a point or just have you understand that technique is called nappe. You know, the way you check if it's done is if you, you know, it's also with sauces, you on the back of the spoon, if you put your finger through it, if the sauce doesn't kind of go back liquidy and it just, you, it leaves that finger streak, streak in there. That's what they mean by a nappe like texture. And that my friends is exactly like, oh, that is picture perfect creaminess with no curdled egg or scrambled egg in there. I was mentioning in Vincenzo's video that I saw some, you know, little bits of egg, but many of you in that video in the comments had mentioned that's kind of normal. And you know what? Now I know your grandma's way to do it, your mom's way to do it, that is traditionally how it is. A little bit of curdling of eggs is totally fine. But this guy, man, is just like those extra little steps taking at that extra three to four, five percent better. Man, is it beautiful. Velvety smooth. Oh, gorgeous. Beautiful. Fucking rock star, man. No, Mamma mia, here it comes. And being made by the chef himself. There we go. Wow. Bonara. Michael Bonara. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's slightly different than mine. It's look, very, very it's look like a bit more professional than yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, yes. 100 bucks and yeah. yes. It looks beautiful. Okay. I'm guessing I, I shouldn't wait too much. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Pepper, you go you go heavy on pepper. Wow. Wow. But mm. you see it's still cream inside. It looks amazing, chef. It's a little bit different than yours. The hacks oh. is cool. It's perfect. This is very nice. Also, the, the, the big chunks of guanciale yeah. with pepper on them. On yeah. them. They're crispy, but they're it's, tender. It's, it's a crispy outside, but it's very tender inside. That yeah. is so that's a, why you make big ones. Yes. You saw, I remove all the black pepper from mm. the skin. You leave that. Yes. I didn't cook, because if you burn the black pepper... Mm. Look at that. You see, that is that extra one or two percent that just takes to the next level. Uh, I mean, looking at this, you would think that this is going to be too fatty. No, yeah, mm. it's different than yours. I remove half of the fat, the guanciale, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. So when you make something like hollandaise sauce or mayonnaise, it's a delicate balance between fat and egg. And if you add too much fat, it'll 
break. Basically, there's too much fat for the egg to handle. So you balance that out by putting in, you know, in the case of hollandaise, you put in a, you know, some vinegar and maybe a little bit of water. Same thing with this. The, the principle is the same. If you keep adding fat to the egg, at some point, it just will break and become greasy rather than smooth. So again, another refined step that Luciano is doing over here to make sure that his egg mixture stays velvety smooth. The other half in the hex, and then I mix it that. You saw. And then there's another secret, the last one. We cook a little bit the pasta in the bagno maria because we use the starch from the pasta for made this cream. He's cooking it on that double boiler. He's putting the pasta and working it at the same time the cream is going. And then it's extracting a little bit of that starch and thickening it up simultaneously. The egg is also thickening up over the heat. Now, regular traditional carbonara, it does the same thing, but he's doing it over a much more gentle heat source. Thus, it gives the pasta a little bit more time to extract its starch. We didn't use only pecorino cheese, but we mixed the cheese. Mm. Mm. We mix, we use uh, pecorino cheese and uh, grana patano cheese. Dude, look, look at this. And you know, he just said he put grana padano and um, Vincenzo's plate was giving um, uh, Gordon Ramsay a little shit for using Grana Padano, saying that it's the cheapest stuff. Grana Padano is a wonderful cheese. You know, essentially it's very similar. I would say it's in the same vein as a Parmesan, as a Pecorino Romano, in that it's a hard, very long aged cheese. And that's on the saltier side, but it is the cheaper one. I do want to listen to why Luciano mixed it. For every recipe, you have to find the balance. And then right now, Okay, he doesn't explain why. He's saying something about balance. I, I'm curious to know. Uh, we'll see. Let's just keep watching. So the palate is changed. Mm. No so, so you, so you have adapt this recipe for the modern palate. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Now mm. I understand why. Mm -hmm. When I eat my dish, I can sense too much fat, a, a bit of a burnt flavor, and for me, this is like uh, this is carbonara. In fact, then it's normal. Yeah, exactly. Maybe it's normal. Maybe it's normal. <laughs> and now I taste it and I'm thinking, no, this is way softer. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so thank much. You I mean, again. Thank you so much. So thank hope you. to see you. It's a masterclass, man. Thank you for teaching Good. me. Thank you for taking the time. And thank you for letting me taste. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy. I'm gonna practice. Yes. You gave yes. me homework, basically. Yeah. See you, chef. Ciao. See you. See you. Bye, bye bye. Ciao. Bye, ciao. Ciao. Wow. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I just need a little time to process what just happened. Guy, this guy's mind is blown. Done. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's just put it simple. Was this the very best carbonara I've ever had in my life? Yes. Mm. Was this worth traveling for? <laughs> yes. Am I getting crazy with all this? I don't think so. Dude, I really like Alex, man. You know, um, from what I read in the comments, he's not a professional chef. He has an engineering background, but you can see his, like how eager he is to learn and understand the why. And that's actually more of the part that I'm interested in about food. It's not actually, you know, the action of the kitchen and all that stuff. It was a means to an end to create an income. And yes, I have this genuine interest in food, but I love the why. And now, you know, I have a restaurant, this YouTube channel, a family, a band, like I just don't have the time like I used to, to be able to dig deep into this stuff. But guys like him, man, they fascinate me and he has all my respect. Very cool video. You guys were not kidding. This guy like just gets obsessed about something and needs to figure it out for himself. I cannot wait to watch the follow-up video. Very cool. So, um, uh, 10 out of 10, beautiful dish. I do my carbonara in a similar similar way with the double boiler and stuff. Again, it's not traditional. My buddy Matteo Lane, comedian Matteo Lane, tried it, said, you know, it was a very good one, but it's, you know, not uh, like uh, traditional. Um, because I also put crispy guanciale in mine. Uh, again, I'm, I'm just learning like you guys are, but very, very cool. I, I am blown away. And man, that is some artistry there. And the classical music with the slow-mo <laughs> and a chef cooking gets me every time. So cool. 
With that said, hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. And with that said, I am Chef Ryan Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.